Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Kentucky Sea Angler. Uh, here in Middle Tennessee, we just had a major temperature drop. Uh, we went down mid 30s, so it's a bit cold out today. I figured I'd pull out the old uh, old spoon and do some bank fishing with a spoon. I'm here at a local pond. Uh, it's nice, it's quiet today. It's usually a pretty pressured area, but due to the drop in temperature, a lot of people aren't out here fishing. So let's see if I can't get some bass on. Okay, so I wanna fish this. Um, basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it out there because I know I can get deep. I know I can cover this entire pond with this, really. And I uh, typically let it sit for a second. And all I'm gonna do is hop it up a couple times, let it sit, and kind of pop it and swim it. Half the time, I mean, if it's out there, you won't even realize you have a bite because it's so heavy till you're you're pulling it in and you feel the fish on those troubles. But it does work. I mean, these are nice too. They just they rip through grass and I'll show you exactly what I'm what I'm using it with. I uh, I prefer a really cheap combo. Um, when I'm tossing these around, I don't want to damage a nice rod or... Let's go really deep now. And let it sit and skip it back. Have a drink of this coffee because it is cold. over here I'm telling you guys this works unconventional it works There we go. I don't know if the camera caught, caught that rod tip, but something, there's a lot of gar in here. I've actually caught them on these spoons before. We got one on. That's, that's wild. That's wild. Oh, would you look at that? That is a beauty. That's a beauty right there. Was I just talking about catching gar? Very, uh, Slimy. All right. I'm gonna grab some pliers real quick. I wanna lose this guy. Man, that's a good looking one. Hopefully we'll get more than just this guy today. Caught some uh, pretty, uh, pretty decent sized gar out here. Sometimes that's all it takes. I probably wouldn't have left it down as long. And I've been messing around. Oh yeah. Let's get this out of you, buddy. Beautiful fish. I love catching gar. Especially when it's on like a, a lure. It's going to be a 
I got them pretty good. This is going to be a... There we go. Oh, yeah. Look at him, guys. This line off, yeah. Just fishing this local pond here. Caught this beautiful little gar. Look at the pattern on that guy. Awesome fish. Those uh, ancient fish. Awesome. Look at that guy. All right, bud. I'm uh, about to get you back in the water. Let's see if we can't get some bass on. But I am super excited to have caught this little guy. Are they actually we get these these fish in this pond they come when the Cumberland floods it floods right into here so there's all kinds of cool stuff dang guys gorgeous gorgeous gar awesome spot get him back in all right bud Very slimy. Oh, goodness, got one on. So it's looking pretty grim for a bass right now, but we did get on this nice uh, freshwater drum. Let's see him. I'm not going to pull out the other camera right now. I got it packed away for moving around. But that's a decent sized one. Good looking fish, pretty ugly. You can lip these, they got little teeth, but they're nothing, uh, nothing to worry about. Similar to like a bass. Throw them back in
Oh, we got one on. Here we go. Oh, man, I think he got off. Oh, no, we're good. The runner. This thing is off. Oh, it's a gar. It's a gar. It's a big boy. And we are bent. Oh, is it? That's not a gar. What is this? Carp? Shit. Might have snagged a carp. I thought it was a gar. Hope it is. Oh, we ate it. Look at that. Choke that spoon. Oh, big nasty. Oh, is that a... All right, guys. This is a... This is a cool fish, all right? This is a buffalo fish. It's a smallmouth buffalo, and he did... He ate our spoon. All right. Oh Lord. Oh. Look at the size of that, guys. You can tell by the scales. This isn't a carp. This is what's called, or I mean, it's not an Asian carp. There's silver carp, which we have a ton of. Actually, I've never seen these guys eat these things. So this is what's called a, a smallmouth buffalo fish. All right, so you can tell by that dorsal right there, it's a good indicator. Um, I mean, this is just a massive one. I've caught one before. This is, this is a lot bigger. You can also tell it's not, it kind of looks like an Asian carp at first glance. You can tell it's not an Asian carp because of its scales right here. Uh, the uh, silvers and big heads have those really tight knit ones, almost kind of look scaleless. But this is a just a massive smallmouth buffalo fish. It's got nose holes right there. I mean, look at that guy. I'm about to get him in the water, and he actually ate our spoon, which I've uh, I've had slime. I've had him eat. Um, I've had him eat, and that's a strong fish. I was gonna say I've had him eat. Uh, <laughs> crankbaits before so this is this is a pretty cool fish this has definitely got trapped in here when the cumberland flooded all right oh man as you can tell i'm just covered in slime look at that Nasty. Man, that was, an, that was an awesome fish. I did not expect to get one of those on. I thought I had a uh, snagged a big head or something, but we had that little buffalo fish just choke that spoon. Just freaking awesome, guys. And that is a wrap, everybody. Thank you for joining me today on our first little pond hopping adventure. So as I was saying, our... Uh, you know, the temperature here in Middle Tennessee where I'm fishing just dropped. We went from 75 down to mid 30s within a couple days. Fortunately, we're getting back up in those 50s, 60s in the next week or so. 
So I have a ton of awesome fall baits. I, I felt like I got cheated out of fall. You know, of course, as soon as the temperature drops, you're like, oh no, you know, it's over. However, um, I, I do fish year round here. I'm privileged um, to be far enough in the Southeast to fish year round. Um, and I got awesome river systems right by me. I got the Cumberland, which is fantastic. But today, um, due to the drop in temperature, I was fishing the, let me get this ready for y'all. Um, this War Eagle Super Spoon. So you don't, you probably don't hear about people fishing a jigging spoon from the bank too often. And I hadn't either. Um, basically, I want to say about two years ago, it was, you know, uh, almost free. The pond was almost frozen and uh, I, w I couldn't catch anything in the river. So, you know, sometimes the luck just goes that way when you're uh, river fishing in the cold. You just, you're just going to be out there all day not catching anything. I knew the fish were in the pond. Couldn't get them to hit anything, so I figured they were extremely deep. So, um, of course, I'm gonna try to get deep. I was throwing dark sleepers, I was throwing, you know, heavy swim baits, heavy, more expensive lures, and yeah, they were getting hit, but I was losing them like crazy. So, uh, I decided to throw a jig and spoon. I'll start out with the Cordell's, fantastic spoons. I'm not trying to talk bad about them at all. They do have a bigger hook, though, and I was snagging Asian carp. It was a pain in the butt because then you got to dispose of the carp. Um, they're extremely invasive. I don't know if you have them in your area, but here we got a ton of them. It was a huge pain in the butt. So I uh, upgraded to these, these War Eagle Super Spoons. I mean, so they are a little more expensive. They got the, uh, the swivel on top. I want to say it's about eight bucks for two of them. And they have a smaller hook. And they got that kind of like eagle claw, like inverted hook, which is absolutely awesome it'll really help you um from really help you to not foul hook fish but uh, it absolutely works uh, you can chuck them a mile i mean i was throwing them across this pond i was covering every bit of water i needed to and it's just a game of time really when you got that on because it's you know it's mimicking like a little minnow here it's a little shiny flashy bait fish looking heavy piece of metal sometimes it's all you need you just got to throw it in front of their face um eventually you're gonna get lucky and you're gonna get hit so that was that's exactly why i do bank fish these spoons um anyhow uh today was an awesome day we caught that we didn't catch any bass i didn't really expect to i, I had my hopes up i have caught them on the spoons before but um you know when we're we're throwing them in. That's, it's an extremely pressured pond. They're, it's fished all the time. It's very close to me. That's why I fish it a lot. Um, but, you know, they just weren't biting today. But we did catch that buffalo fish, which is really cool. I'm glad I got that on camera. I've caught them very rarely before. Uh, that's a, actually an exact uh, competitor with an Asian carp. Um, it's it's not a member of the carp family. I didn't really specify. I was kind of caught up in the moment when I caught it. It's a member of the sucker family, kind of like a red horse. So very cool fish. It's an omnivore fish, so I'm not surprised it hit that little spoon. Um, it must have been pretty hungry. You know, uh, I got swam away all right. Everything was fine. I do hate yanking them in by their they're kind of like soft little sucker thing, but. It is what it is. I'm, I'm happy we caught it. It was a pretty cool fish. But yeah, that, the gar, whatever. Um, yeah, before I go, I'll show you what I was uh, fishing. I like an inexpensive combo for throwing spoons. Um, stuff happens, your bill will close mid throw sometimes. You know, you know how it goes. Um, whipping around an ounce lure, uh, especially as excessively as we did today, I don't want to damage an expensive rod. So. I actually bought this a couple years ago. It's kind of an impulse buy, but it has found a fantastic purpose doing this for me. And uh, I will use it to uh, fish flutter spoons as well, which we'll do another episode on those. But it is an offshore angler gold cup inshore rod. Um, I don't know too much about the maker. Um, I do know I got it from Bass Pro online. Um, it was it was inexpensive. I want to say it was in the, the fifty to seventy dollar range, so a pretty cheap rod compared to a lot of my other stuff. It's a seven six, uh, medium heavy. It doesn't specify the action, but it's 
probably the fast or very fast action. I mean, this thing is a freaking pool cue. Uh, their medium heavy rating, I would love to see their heavy rating because their medium heavy is like my Dobbins mag heavy rods. Uh, I love the butt. The, uh, the handle is, it's extremely long. So, I mean, this thing, it's over a foot long. So you're whipping that and I mean, you can just cover water with it. I got on a Fluger, it needs some heavy maintenance. I'm sure you could tell by the, uh, the audible drag. I mean, it, you could, it, it did not sound like the drag it's supposed to. This is basically, I've never done any maintenance on it. I've had it for years. I, I'm definitely gonna do that. Maybe we'll do, a, do an episode on that. But yeah, I wanted to show y'all what I was working with exactly. Careful of that fan up there. But again, thanks everybody. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support. If you could give me a like, if you could subscribe, it really means the world to me. I check that stuff every morning. I love it. Um, but I, I will be back uh, shortly with another episode where um, yeah, I'll be throwing something, something else. So thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. Everybody take care. Uh, happy holidays.